Hey guys, a lot of you kids are asking me philosophical questions like, what is enthalpy? So this is my video to help try to explain it to you. Enthalpy itself is the energy from chemical bonds. Now, when chemical bonds are broken, you need to put in energy to do that. Energy is absorbed when bonds are broken. But if you have two atoms coming together to form a bond, energy is actually released. Now, this energy change as a whole is called enthalpy, and we call it delta H, because H is enthalpy, and then the delta is the change in enthalpy over the course of any particular chemical reaction. Now, I need you guys to understand two things about this kind of enthalpy. The first is that energy is released when bonds form. If I have two NO2 molecules and they combine to form an N2O4 molecule, then that's two becoming one. There are bonds being made and so energy is released when those bonds are made. The same is true when a fluorine atom combines with an electron to make a fluoride to become one, and energy is released in that process. An aluminum 3 plus ion in aqueous solution will combine with water. This forms a complex where the aluminum is a central atom and water is a ligand or ligand, I don't know how you pronounce it. This process also releases energy because the aluminum is now connected to the water by whatever kind of bond is made. Energy is actually needed if you're going to break bonds. If I have a chlorine, like a Cl2 molecule, and I want to break it up into two chlorine atoms, I need to add energy. I've written it as H times nu for light. Xenon, you can add energy to to make it Xe+. Plus. And actually, I forgot to write here that when you ionize Xe like that, you actually eject an electron and an electron is produced. Notice one becomes two in this reaction as opposed to two becoming one. And here I have water as a solid turning into water as a gas. Now water as a solid is ice. It's a big block and water as a gas is steam. Each of the water molecules is individual there in the gas phase. We broke the hydrogen bonds between those atoms of the ice to form a liquid, then a solid. And to break those hydrogen bonds, we needed to put in energy. Energy is actually required to break those bonds. Now, to emphasize this to you, I put together this problem, which is what's the enthalpy change when you burn methane? Methane is CH4 and it takes two molecules of oxygen, or O2, to break those bonds, or to burn the methane, I should say. And it creates one carbon dioxide and two waters per methane burned. See, one C makes one CO2, and four H's make two H2O's. But here's the real question is, how much energy does it take to create and break whatever bonds are being created and broken here. Well, each CH bond is actually, it requires 413 kilojoules to break one mole of those bonds. I actually have four of those bonds per molecule here. So that's four times 413. Let's say we have one mole here. Four moles times 413 kilojoules per mole requires this many kilojoules of energy to break one mole of bonds between all the carbons and all the hydrogens here. Now I have two OO double bonds. Each OO double bond is worth 495 kilojoules per mole. In case you're wondering where I got these numbers, I looked them up ahead of time and you can probably see I cheated by writing them here so that I wouldn't have to look them up again. They're in a table of what's called bond enthalpies. And you're probably gonna have to do that yourself later. So, to break all of the bonds on this side of the reaction, 
we have to break four CH bonds and two OO double bonds. So, how much does that require? Well, four times 413 plus two times 495 gives me 2,642 kilojoules of energy to break all the bonds in one mole of methane and two moles of oxygen. Let's assume that each of these represents one mole of each thing. We need 2,642 kilojoules to break all the bonds on this side of the reaction. On this side, I have two CO double bonds. One on this side, one on this side. Each of those requires 799 kilojoules to break. And I have four OH single bonds. See? OH, 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 OH. Now, not only is this the amount of energy required to break that bond, but it's also the amount of energy released when that bond forms. So, if it requires 2,642 kilojoules of energy to break all these bonds on this side, how much energy do we get out when we form all the bonds on this side? Well, the answer is 2 times 799 plus 4 times 463. That's 3,450 kilojoules of energy on this side. So, we have to put in 2,642 kilojoules of energy, and we get out 3,450 kilojoules of energy. Now, I'm no fool, but I would argue we're getting out more energy than we're putting in. So, if we're getting out more energy, that tends to mean we're giving off energy over the course of the whole reaction. And the delta H for the reaction is negative. A negative delta H represents an exothermic reaction, which means heat is given off. Now, if you're going to handle this mathematically, it's actually the total bond enthalpies of the reactants minus the total bond enthalpies of the products to give you your raw delta H. When it comes down to delta H of formation, it's actually going to be products minus reactants. Bond enthalpies, like we've just handled here, are the only time it will be reactants minus products, just as a heads up. So, let's see if we can do this. 2,642 minus uh, 3,450 ends up giving me negative 808 kilojoules. So, for every mole of methane that I burn, I require two moles of oxygen. I produce one mole of carbon dioxide, and I produce two moles of water. And over the course of that reaction, I release 808 kilojoules of energy. Hopefully, this has helped elucidate for you that energy needs to be put in to break bonds on the reactant side, and energy is released when you form bonds on the product side of a reaction. That's the qualitative and quantitative way that I need you to understand enthalpy. And for the rest of the thermodynamics course, I wish you only the best of luck.